Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to continue on implement a root level request logger middleware. If you have not been working with me for this whole time, um, I would recommend going back. I'm running all of these on a single actual production web app, one that we could actually produce. So <clears throat> I'm, the way that I'm going to do this it is very dependent on you having a deployed node Heroku app. <clears throat> so here we go. Earlier you were reduced to express.static middleware function. Now it's time to see what middleware is in more detail. Middleware functions are functions that take three arguments, the request object, the response object, and the next function in the, request, in the application's request response cycle. These functions execute some code that can have side effects on the app and usually add information to request or response objects. They can also end the cycle by sending a response when some conditions are met. If they don't send the response, when they are done, they start the execution of the next function in the stack. This triggers calling the third argument, which is called next. So here we see an example. So we have our function and we're passing in parameters of request, um, the result, and then the next variable. And then you can see that we're calling the next function, sorry, the next function, and we're passing the next function in here. And then in here, we're just doing whatever. They have a console log to just fill in uh, for now. So let's suppose you mounted this function on a route um, when a request matches the route, it displays a string, I'm a middleware, then it executes the next function in the stack. In this exercise, you're going to build a root level middleware, as you have seen in challenge four, to mount a middleware function at root level. You can use app.use, and then you throw a function in there. You can, this, you can use the app.use method. In this case, the function will be executed for all the requests, but you can also set more specific conditions. For example, if you want a function to be executed only for a post request, then you could use app.post and then throw the middleware in there. Analogous methods exist for all HTTP verbs, including get, delete, and put. Uh, so we want to build a simple logger for every request. It should log to the console a string taking the following format where we have a method and then separated by a space, and then we have a path separated by a space and a dash, and then the IP. Uh, an example would look like this. So we've got git, and we're going to forward slash JSON, and then we have this IP address, uh, which is FFFF127001, and those are all separated by periods. Note that there is a space between method and path, and the dash separating path and IP is surrounded by space on both sides. You can get the request method, HTTP verb, the rel relative route, route path, and the caller's IP from the request object using request.method, request.path, and request.ip. Remember to call next when you are done, or the server will be stuck forever. Be sure to have the logs opened to see what happens when some requests arrive. So in production, we've got our logs over here on the Heroku, <clears throat> but we'll run it locally initially to make sure we're getting it right. Um, so express evaluates functions in order they appear in the code. This is true of middleware too. If you want it to work for all routes, it should be mounted before then. <clears throat> okay, so we want to build a logger for every request. It should log to the console a string taking the following format. So we're going to go to myapp.js. And so you'll see we would think about putting it here, but because we're adding middleware above all routes. We're, we're making a middleware that's going to log for all routes, so we're going to have to add that up here at the top. <clears throat> and so, yeah, we want to use app.use, and then here we're going to have a middleware function. Um, yeah, app.use. And so our function is going to have a request, a response, and then we're going to have a next uh, function at the end. And so we want to make sure we use next at the end. And then we're going to want to pull things out. So I'm just going to console.log, let's say request um, dot, uh, what was it, verb? Request.method, um, request.path, and request.ip here. And then that should be that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna come back to our console. You can see that I'm in the project uh, root domain folder, and so I'm going to go npm start just to run our local server. And this is going to happen when we do basically anything. So I might as well just uh, come back over here. I could do the JSON, or I could just go to index. And so here, 
we see git public style CSS and then oh here it's got git one, 01 and so because we're running this locally our IP address is just one which is great so we're getting we're logging our method our request path and our request.ip now that is not necessarily the format that we want what we want to do is say the request method uh, yeah, it says, note that there is a space between method and path. So method and path. So we can add these by adding a space in here. So we put a space between there. And a dash separating path and IP is surrounded by a space on both sides. So instead of a comma, we're going to go um, a space dash space. And so now, if I save this, uh, stop the server and reset it, I press the up button to rapidly reset the server and then I refresh this page you'll see now it's forming this path get with a space and then a space dash space of one whereas up here it was different so we just formatted the string and so this should be passing the test this is the middleware logger that they were looking for and so but yeah it's not doing that in production right we have it running locally we had it running locally we canceled this we stopped the server but now if we look to production and we were to um, just say run the main page and we went back to our loggers, we would see that it's not logging everything. It's just logging this. And so what we need to do is push this code to the production server. And to do that, we use git and Taroku. So we want to say git add. Well, I can just show you, you don't have to do this, but the git status shows us that app.js has been altered. And if we go git diff, we can see that we've added this middleware function. So it's green and it has the pluses at the beginning. So we can say git add, um, and then we can say git commit dash m, add a middleware logger. And now we can get, say git push, and we want to push this to Heroku. So our state, our production service, Heroku, and then we're going to go ahead master, because that's the branch that we want to push to. And so if we watch our logs here, you'll see that there, the build was started here. So we're logging, we're, we're getting the build going. Um, they're installing the dependencies. This is all happening on a server somewhere in Heroku's uh, server farm somewhere. And, and this is all free initially. If you wanted to get your app running faster and be able to scale it, you'll end up paying Heroku more. But for now, you've basically got it open. And you'll see right now, nothing's logged, but we do have our hello world logs coming out, which we have here. So if I were to open up the reef if i was open up the production app which is this guy and i refresh the page we come back over here we should see get yeah so we're seeing a logger so this is saying it's getting the index and then it's getting the static files and it's logging the ip address um, for that and so it should be working now so let's take the uh, url of our production app and paste paste it into here and see if it works Cool, that was that one. So yeah, what we did was we just created a middleware app. So anytime that any path, because we haven't passed in a path here, if we had passed in, say, something like forward slash, this would only run on the, on the root directory. But because we're passing it in like this, it's running on all the directories. And we're just console, consoling, we're logging something to the console, and then we're saying next. So after this thing runs, then it's going to the next one, which in our... In this case, we're going to the index file, and that is being, we're console logging that to our production uh, server. So we can see our production server here, and that's how we're passing this test. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next lesson.